Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Curious Palette. Today's dish needs no introduction. Samosas are literally the most famous Indian snack out there. It is also a very special dish to me as I started my cooking journey when I was 12 years old with this very dish. It turned out just okay then, but it made me curious as to what went wrong. And since then, I have never stopped experimenting in the kitchen. And now I can say that I have perfected this recipe and I'm going to share some tips and tricks with which you can replicate the dish without any failure every single time. So make sure to watch this video until the very end. Let's quickly take a look at the ingredients needed to make this pastry or dough. We need 2 cups of all-purpose flour or maida, 2 tablespoons of oil, 2 tablespoons of clarified butter or ghee, 1 teaspoon of carom seeds, half a teaspoon of salt and approximately half a cup of cold water. For the spicy potato stuffing, we will need 400 grams of potatoes, half a cup of green peas, half a cup of finely chopped coriander leaves, a handful of cashews, 1 tablespoon finely chopped green chilies, half a teaspoon of asafoetida, 1 tablespoon of cumin seeds, 1.5 teaspoons of coriander powder, 1 teaspoon chili powder, 1 teaspoon garam masala, 1 teaspoon of roasted cumin powder, 1 teaspoon chaat masala, 1 teaspoon dry mango powder or amchur powder, 1 teaspoon of finely chopped ginger, 1 tablespoon of dried fenugreek leaves, salt as per your taste and oil for deep frying. To make this flaky pastry, in a large bowl, take 2 cups of all-purpose flour, add half a teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of carom seeds or ajwain, just lightly crush them with your hands and add it. We do this so the carom seeds release its oils and increase the flavor. Next we add in a combination of oil and ghee. I am going with half and half so that the pastry is both crispy and crunchy. So I get the perfect texture of a street style samosa. You can always skip the oil and add in more ghee but that would make the samosa more flaky and less crispy. Let's call that tip number 1. Next we need to mix these ingredients really well. This would take a good 3-4 to four minutes and if you have warm hands, try and refrigerate your ingredients before use. So the reason we do all of this is to make the pastry flaky, otherwise the ghee and oil will melt into the flour. After mixing it for 3-4 to four minutes, you will see a change in color and if you hold the dough tightly with your hands, it should come together and not break apart. Let's proceed to kneading the dough. One really important thing at this stage is to use cold water to knead this dough. So why cold water? Water when absorbed in the flour helps these flour molecules to swell up and form gluten. However, if the water is cold, then it's absorbed at a much slower rate into the flour molecules, thus reducing the rate of gluten formation and giving you more time to knead the flour well. So that's tip number 2 to use cold water. The last and the most important step in making this pastry is to knead this dough really really tight. So start kneading by using the water little by little and in stages. You will mostly end up saving some water out of the half a cup of water. But we definitely don't want to use more than half a cup of water for 2 cups of flour. Even if you feel that the flour is too tight or stiff, after resting it for 10 to 20 minutes it will soften up. So don't be tempted to add in more water. Just go on kneading the dough for longer and you will see that the dough starts coming together and stop sticking to the bowl or your hands. Let me show you how flaky and tight this dough is. When I am breaking this apart, I think you can see the difference between normal dough and this one. Also when you press the dough, you can feel a lot of resistance and this is what we are looking for. Now cover this dough with either a damp kitchen towel or a cling wrap and allow it to rest for at least a minimum of 20 minutes to a half an hour. While that's resting, we can get started on making the spicy potato filling. Peel the boiled potatoes and crush them with your hands to make uneven bits and pieces. We are only looking to break them apart and not mash them. Also, they will be broken into smaller pieces while cooking as well. In a pan, add in 2 teaspoons of oil. Once the oil is hot, add in cumin seeds, asafoetida or hing and chopped green chilies and saute till they are fried. Next, we add in half a cup of green peas. I am using frozen green peas. 
If you are using fresh ones, make sure to just boil them for some time before adding it to this pan. Saute the piece for some time and add the finely grated ginger. Ginger tends to stick to the pan which is why we are adding it later. After some time, add the potatoes to this mixture and fry. Mix the potatoes well and crush any larger bits that are there. It's time to add in all the dry masala powders. To this potato mixture, now I am adding roasted cumin powder, coriander powder, the chilli powder, the dry mango powder or amchur powder, chaat masala, garam masala and finally the dried fenugreek leaves. Crush the kasuri methi leaves between your palm and then add it. This will enhance the flavor of the kasuri methi leaves. And salt as per your taste and mix this well. If you don't have dry mango powder or amchur powder, you could replace it with 1 teaspoon of lemon juice. Saute the potato mixture until the raw smell of all these powders are gone. Next, we add in a handful of broken cashews and finely chopped coriander leaves. Mix this well and turn the stove off. The spicy potato filling is now ready. Transfer the potato filling to a different bowl and allow it to cool down. Now that the filling is done, let's check on our dough that has been resting. We will knead this one last time and also check out how this dough has gotten much softer compared to when we had let it to rest. I am going to be making medium sized samosas and so I will divide this dough into 8 equal portions which means this batch yields around 16 medium sized samosas. You can increase or decrease the size of the samosa based on your preference. The dough is now ready to be rolled out. Let's roll these dough out into thin pastry sheets. If the dough is perfect, then this would not require any extra all purpose flour or oil to roll them out. The dough will not stick to any surface and come out clean. But if your dough turned out to be sticky, then use oil to roll them out instead of using all purpose flour. This way, when you deep fry the samosas, your oil will still remain clean and your samosas will absorb less oil compared to when you are using all purpose flour to roll them out. Roll all the 8 dough balls into thin oval sheets. The reason we roll them out slightly thinner than the consistency that we require is because once you remove the sheet after rolling, the gluten in the dough will shrink the sheets to some extent. Cut these sheets into halves and keep them aside covered with a cling wrap or a wet towel in order to avoid these sheets from drying out. One important thing to remember is to roll out these sheets evenly on all sides. The thickness of these sheets should be around 3 mm and not more. If the sheets are thick, then they will take longer cooking time as well as absorb more oil. Let me show you how to fold these samosas in order to get the perfect cone shape as well as a samosa which can stand on the plate. I will be showing you two ways to fold the samosa. In the first method, Place the semicircle such that the straight line is away from you. Take one corner and fold it such that that corner reaches the middle part of the semicircle, just like the one shown in the video. Now, since this dough is not sticky, we will use water to make them stick. So apply a thin layer of water to the other half of the semicircle and bring it over the fold that we made earlier. In the second method, Take the semicircle sheet in your hand, apply water over one half of the straight line, hold both the edges of the straight line with both your hands and bring them together over each other. Press and seal the edges well in order to avoid the filling from spilling out into the oil while frying. To stuff the samosa, hold the pastry like you would hold an ice cream cone. Make sure the seal side is towards you. With the help of a spoon, fill in the potato filling and make sure not to fill it too much or too less. To seal the samosa, make sure to apply a thin layer of water to seal the edges. Make a fold on the side which is away from you and bring this fold over the filling to the sides which we had earlier sealed. This fold is what will help the samosas stand. Repeat these steps and make all the samosas before we go on to the frying stage. To fry the samosas, take a deep dish and place it on medium heat. Pour in enough oil for the samosas to be deep fried. 
if you fry the samosas at very high heat then there will be bubbles formed on the pastry layer which is one of the problems many people have faced while making samosas now we will be double frying the samosas what this means is we will fry the samosas once in low heat and for longer time this first fry is basically for the samosas to be cooked thoroughly keep moving the samosas around so that they get cooked evenly and don't have any heat patches once the samosas turn opaque and are cooked we can remove them and place them on a paper towel meanwhile let's fry the second batch i'm going to fry this batch just until the samosas turn opaque the samosas can be put into a ziploc bag and frozen these can be stored for up to a minimum of 2 months in the freezer this way you can get to eat fresh and homemade samosas whenever you want see the difference in color the one on the right is for freezing and the one on the left is for making the samosas right now now increase the flame to a high and let us fry the first batch of samosas for the second time this frying at high heat is basically for making the samosa pastry crispy and golden color the samosas are ready listen to the sound check how crispy this is and the perfect samosas are ready i hope you enjoy these melt in the mouth samosas if you have any queries or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below please give this recipe a thumbs up and subscribe to the curious palette bye bye take care